As we get more and more advanced with Ableton Live, we're going to want to get efficient with our music making process. And a huge part of being efficient um, is using the keyboard efficiently. So it's learning key commands and maybe setting up your own custom keyboard mappings. So there are some great keyboard commands built into Live already, and you're probably using some of them, like Tab to switch between the Arrange and Session view. Shift Tab will switch between the Clip and the um, Device view and the Detail view here in Live. Uh, command R is Rename. Command D is Duplicate. Command O is Open. Command Z is Undo. And again, that's on a Mac. On a PC, those would be Control instead of Command. Um, a couple other really important ones that I like are these View ones. And one of the nice things about having the Info view open in Live, you look in the lower left-hand corner of Live, you'll see that it actually shows you the key command there. And that Command Option I on a Mac will show or hide the I.O. section. And in fact, Command Option plus letters will hide all of these kind of view, the important view sections, which is the I.O., send, receive, and your meters or the mixer section. So we see key commands are very useful. Key commands, by definition, are the, the key commands that live puts in there for you, right? So those are the things that are are in the program, they're hardwired to the program, but you can actually set your own keyboard mappings. And these are a little different, so we want to understand the difference between keyboard commands and keyboard mapping. Again, keyboard commands are um, part of Live, they're determined by the developers, and they will be the same in every one of your projects. Keyboard mappings, on the other hand, are defined by you, the user, and they can be unique to every different project. One project might have a certain set of keyboard mappings, and I could have another project with a different set of mappings if I would so like. That makes each, pro each uh, performance highly customizable and unique, uh, but can cause some confusion. So let's look a little bit about how we would define our own keyboard mappings. But before I do, I want to mention keyboard commands once more and say you may want to look in the manual because there's a wonderful section in the manual that gives you all of the live keyboard shortcuts. And honestly, it seems kind of funny, but I love looking through keyboard shortcuts for programs because you'll start learning things, you know, in different ways to make yourself really efficient. So I'd say have a look through the manual. It's toward the end of the manual and you can look at all the great keyboard commands that are set up for you automatically. But again, we're going to look at creating our own mappings. To add your own mapping or keyboard mapping, you'll go to this um, key button in the upper right hand corner of Live. And we can also get that with a key command, which is Command K on a Mac or Control K on a PC. Again, um, we can click on it or we can use a key command to turn on keyboard mapping mode. Now once you're in the keyboard mapping mode, we can also show the keyboard mapping browser, which is on the left hand side here and you see it's titled key mappings. Now for me, I like to have um, some, some keyboard mappings just set up for me that I use all the time. Like tap tempo, I like that to be a T key and to set that mapping, I click on the tap tempo button, hit the T key right there and we'll see that we have key T is controlling uh, transport tap tempo and we also see the T is outlined right there and I can go across and add a couple more that I think are important for click I usually give myself a C um, this is follow which I'll give myself an F uh, record I like to use the asterisk key on the numeric keypad and I'll hit that and one of the important things here is you might find some things like numbers say I was to give this the number three well, now that's going to be N3, meaning the numeric keypad. But if I went to um, the alphanumeric part, you know, the part of the keyboard that's above the letters and hit three, it would just be the number three right there. So we do see that we can use different key commands uh, for the numbers on the top of the keyboard and the numeric keypad. And I'll use the asterisk for record there. Um, we have our overdub or arrangement overdub button, uh, which I can give the O key to if I wanted or I could use the um, session record button, which is the one I will give the O key to, that's session record. And we can always use the delete key to delete a mapping and the delete key cannot be mapped to something else in live. Uh, we could also call this O and call this one option O. So option gives us a whole separate set of commands and I could also do shift O 
uppercase and lowercase are different. So we can have that many more and I can do shift option O. So that's uppercase end with the option. So you see we can have we can set up our own complex key mappings that actually use the modifier shift and option. I might want to have a looping for L. Now the draw um, option here um, is automatically set to a single key, which is the B key. So that's going to be fine for me. And I can just use the B. Now, one thing to be aware of is how keyboard mapping interacts with the um, MIDI keyboard, right? We can use our alphanumeric keyboard to actually play MIDI notes um, in our project. Say I was to record and enable my string part. I have keyboard mapping on. I'll play a key on my alphanumeric keyboard. And I can play right along using my alphanumeric keyboard. The problem is that is going to interrupt any keyboard mappings that I have set up. So that overrides keyboard mapping. So if you're finding that some of your keyboard mappings aren't functioning properly, most likely it's because this MIDI keyboard is enabled. So again, we have to be very careful with the MIDI keyboard. If it's on, those keys on your alphanumeric keyboard will play back notes in the record enabled track, but those notes can no longer be used for key mappings. Now we said keyboard mappings are unique to each project and that's totally true. So if I was to hit command N right now, those keyboard mappings would not be there. But there's a nice thing we can do in the live preferences so we can set up a template of keyboard mappings and use them over and over again. Let's check it out. If I go to my live preferences and I look in my file folder section, we have an option for save current set as default. Now, I don't want to do this right now because that will actually bring all these clips in here and all these tracks as my default. So what I would suggest you do is open up a new blank live project and configure the keyboard mappings you know that you're going to use all the time. I would suggest things like tap tempo, click track, follow, uh, record, overdub, a range overdub, looping, those things that you find yourself using all the time. And then save that set as your default. And you can even include more in your default set if you like. You could include uh, multiple tracks that you use all the time. You could name the tracks, you could color things, you could put return effects that you could always use, you could leave in a mastering plugin that you use all the time. Any way that you can fine tune your project, you can set up as your default set. And every time you hit Command N, all that stuff will come up waiting for you.